Hello, and welcome to Why I Love Warhammer, the series where I go into an unscripted ramble about why I love something in this hobby. And today it's the 29th of January, and it is the weekly news roundup to get all the Warhammer community news in one place. Starting out with submitting nominations for Warhammer Heroes. Um, yeah, it's been gone for four years, and yeah, it's coming back, nominate someone. Um, to be honest, given that this is about people who do something really active in the hobby, going the extra mile, tournaments, events, etc. Um, I don't really know who I'd nominate because most people I follow tend to be YouTube people. So there's that YouTube people and the guy who runs my local Warhammer shop. So yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, it, it's a really nice idea though. So I think anyone, if you can think of someone to nominate, I would recommend doing it just so because this feels nice to have in the community, you know. Okay, next, new Delac Bounty Hunter. I feel like House Delac do get a lot of stuff in Necromunda. And I still don't really grasp how the list building works, which is a shame because the models look really fun. The game's apparently amazing. And look at this model. Look at that. Okay, the, the chainmail. This awesome blade. The pipes, I think, look really cool. Necromunda basing's always phenomenal. And like little details like this, I just think they're really pretty. And they work really well for this model. So, yeah. Good on you, House Delac. And, yeah, it's a cool Necromunda model, this. Yagloth. Okay, End of the Death Volume 3 came back to sale. And, yeah, they did their best to stop the scalping again. Uh, so, good on them for trying. Uh, I feel like the jury's still out at time of recording how successful they were at actually getting the scalpers to stop, but I'm glad they tried. I'm glad they're taking some more measures, because, yeah, the scalping market is just wrong <laughs> in every sense of the word. The legacy PDFs. I put up a video and that was very much a... Um, I, I, I I regretted it immediately, made it members only. So if you wanted to become a member, you can see my getting things horrifically wrong, right? Because I've got my Skaven army and I downloaded the PDF for the, you know, for, for the legacy support, tried making an army using only the models I got for Age of Sigmar Skaven and it came out at 800 and something points. But then I used this website, which is Old World Builder, and that same Skaven army came out at oh, at two thousand three hundred and eight points, um, and I didn't have a general. Um, so this is Old World Old Dash World Dash Builder dot com, which I'll be using until an official alternative comes out. But and it's, I'm glad that these are now out, these legacy PDFs, and you know, would I have preferred these guys get official support? Even if they said, look, we'll give you official rules, but we're not going to release new models or something like that, I'd be, I'd be more okay with that. But given that these are legacy factions, I am glad they're here. Um, yeah. And you know, lizard men are cool. The Chaos Dwarves didn't have as much as many you know, dwarves, or dwarfs. The Chaos Dwarfs didn't have as many dwarf models as I thought they were going to, and if the rumours are to be believed that we're getting Chaos Dwarfs in Age of Sigmar, that's going to be awesome. Okay, rumour engine. Uh, it's a cloak. It could be literally anything. So, for a laugh, I'm going to say this is going to be a model for the Ogre Kingdoms in Age of Sigmar. It's going to be a Noblar model, and it's going to be like a big centerpiece, but still just a single Noblar. Um, yeah. They keep saying no Zotes, which does make me feel like Zotes are coming. It's like how they, they've made a lot of jokes about squats before we got the, um, yeah, before we got the Leagues of Votan. 
and like I can imagine Zotes being added into the Gene Stealer cult as like the messengers of the Forearm and Emperor or something. Call them messengers, but they're blatantly Zotes. Armies on parade. Um, I love the idea of entering armies on parade, but I just don't think I'm skilled enough for it. Um, yeah, it would be a really cool to enter, but I love seeing the the, the armies that go on parade. Like, this is really cool. I it's just not one for me with my current talents. Yeah, you know, I'll keep trying to improve my painting. Maybe someday. But still, really cool that it's here. Kill team! Um, just stuff about the terrain. I do really like this version, this edition of Kill Team. I think it's a lot of fun, and they've changed it up to be meaningfully different from just what if 40k but smaller. And so I think, yeah, these in, these are very interesting, these... You know, you know uh, the way they do the measurements. I mean, <clears throat> do, do, do I think they could have used inches rather than the tool? Sure. But, again, I, there, there are interesting things like, you know, how you select your units, kind of, are they going to be you know, of defending or, <clears throat> you know, uh, or, or moving and different, you know, the, the way the different targeting things work. I think this terrain piece is really cool. I love how it changes how you move i like the hazardous thing between so it kind of adds a bit of you can take the shortcuts but it's a risk this is a really good addition of kill team um I, I played the last version too i don't think i played the first version of kill team but i definitely played this one and the last one and yeah i do prefer this version of kill team because it does make it meaningfully different black library collection it was a really cool model. And yeah, more cool books to add add stuff to the 40k universe. Rock on them. Okay, so this is the Warhammer Plus Battle Report stuff. Um they they, they did a th they did this for 40k and now they're doing it with Age of Sigma where they just get the big, big models and just face them against each other with very like no terrain, no real strategy. It's just Taking it, taking in turns to have a bit of a shoot and have a bit of a, and have a bit of a brawl and see who's left. Uh, it was an interesting episode just to see these huge centerpiece models fighting up against each other. I don't really know. Yeah, it it feels like it's going to be tricky to figure out who's going to win, um, because it does sometimes just feel like the dice rolls. And without the strategy, I don't really know how representative it is. But it's cool to see a bunch of massive centerpiece models just duking it out. It's it's fun. I feel like there were more battle reports they potentially could have done before going to this. Because this kind of feels like the thing you do when you're running low on ideas. But it's still fun to see. I'm glad this came out. How to paint this uh, Necrolith Bone Dragon. I think bones are tricky to paint at the best of times. I tend to paint them... I tend to go Oakland Grey and then have a light coat of Agrax Earthshade to give it some detail. I've never actually used the paint Wraith Bone. But I thought this was just a, a nice thing for them to do, to just have a tutorial on painting the big centerpiece model. Because I, I, painting big centerpiece models can be really intimidating it, and... I'm always in favour of lowering that barrier to entry to this hobby as much as possible. So having a tutorial in video form for painting the big centerpiece, very happy about that. Always, always happy to see stuff like that in this, you know, in this sphere. Events, double, no, strategy battle game, double, the Middle Earth doubles, Warhammer the Old World double, uh, tournament, Legions Imperialis, more Old World, Blood Bowl, just, yeah, nice that there are events going on. Uh, yeah, they're all happening at Warhammer World, which uh, isn't too far away from where I live, but um, it's further away than I'd necessarily go if I had any doubts about my ability to play this game. Um, as in, if I had a no, if I had no doubts about how, how good I am at the game, I'd definitely go on down. But, um, 
yeah. Never actually played in a tournament. I'd really, I'd really love to. And yeah, just yeah, these are they're so, yeah. Like Middle Earth, hugely fun game. Old World's brand new and really swanky. Leaves Imperialis, bring it on. Blood Bowl just looks like such a fun setting. It's another Horus Heresy book coming out. I was really hyped about this because I love this colour scheme as you know, as successor chapter, uh, 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 yeah, sub-faction. I think that's just, it's so striking, so beautiful. I love how crisp that bronze is, but also weathered. It's so cool. I mean, a lot of these Horus Heresy models, a lot, well, a lot of the colour schemes, it's kind of four or five colours in total, plus detailing. And this is like black, this is what, black, bronze, silver, gold, red and blue and yeah it's just such a striking color scheme that i'm completely enamored by these guys i i don't it, it's kind of on par with those um fallen and risen color schemes i did for the dark angels in 40k not so long ago just how taken i am by this this is the thing like these color schemes it's so so wonderful and it can really give inspiration to just Try something different and yeah, completely enamored by these guys. Really happy about them. Middle Earth stuff. <clears throat> uh this board game coming out. Uh, <clears throat> these guys being made to order. Uh, <clears throat> again, because because when I was playing this game the first time around, back in like 2005, 2006 it's really nice seeing these models. It's really nostalgic to see the models from my you know, early teenage years coming back into the setting. And yeah, they're made to order, but they're still cool. And yeah, they're still they're still the sculpts I grew up with. What's interesting is the these horses. Uh, so if you go to the if if you do subscribe to Warhammer Plus, they just did a video on painting equine fur, and comparing that tutorial with these is a very interesting thing just to see how the models have aged new meta watch based on lvo for age of sigma um interesting army lists and yeah just meta watch continues they keep trying to balance the game good for them trying to keep this balanced I won't read the next Dawnbringer Chronicles, not on this video, but still, it's cool that it's here. Okay, Codex Supplement Dark Angels. Just nice seeing a bit more, a bit more, you know, stuff for the bite, you know, stuff for the Ravenwings attachments. Um, yeah. And these honor points, I think, are going to be interesting. I, I hope that they don't end up like the judgment tokens from the first version of the leagues of anto leagues of otan codex but it doesn't seem on the face of it ridiculous to me right now and yeah i mean obviously there's going to be some codex creep which you know that's a story for a different video my opinions on that but again kind of given that codex creep it doesn't seem awful how they, this is happening. Um, what I'm curious about is <clears throat> these four models, three bikes and this, I think it's the ATV, seem like loyalists, but this is Cypher the Fallen Angel. This is a very chaos model. So I don't actually know if Cypher's going to move across codexes uh, in this edition. If he does, I technically have a Dark Angels model, which is going to be fun. But yeah, so yeah, Dark Angel is coming out. Dark Angel Codex supplement. Yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Looks cool. Golden Demon twenty twenty four. Again, I, I, I don't know if I could ever be at the level of Golden Demon. I'd love to be, and I can keep practicing. But holy moly, um. Some these golden demon winners are so good. Uh, there was that one with the 
uh, Gargant and the Hydra, which to this day is one of the, my favourite models I've seen entering a Golden Demon. Just so impressed, and yeah, so looking forward to this, to seeing these online. It's going to be really fun. Okay, the Saturday pre-orders. Hopefully those of you who wanted these managed to get them. Some nice old um, Tomb Kings models. I do love these classic skeleton horses. Like I, I, I'm aware they might not have aged that well, but I still think they look really cool. Bretonian Lord on Pegasus. More Bretonians. Damsels of the Lady. So that's a that's a cool sounding phrase. Audio book on pre-order, and we will end with the Sunday preview. Uh, just came okay, out the next Dawnbringers Crusade. This model here looks so cool. Like if he's meant to be this guy, I think this doesn't quite capture it as well as this. This is such a cool looking model. Usharon Mortark of Delusion. Yeah, fangs the Blood Queen. I love these guys. They look really cool. These awesome fell bats, the wolves. I love this woman here with this amazing snake sculpt. Is just oh, that's just so so brilliant. Love seeing that. Flesh Eater Quartz Battles Home. I want to do some more research into the Flesh Eater Quartz before I do a full on why I love the Flesh Eater Quartz episode. Because these guys are really cool looking. I love the vampire aesthetic. They're so bestial, but they've got this like civilization about them. Like this judge, but the this grotesque judge's wig. Yeah, there's a, clearly some pride and some, and some society with them, but I just need to do more research into their lore before I can really go whole hog with it because they deserve it. Like, this is so cool. Look at this, like, executioner's garb, but it's all still skin. Just, ah, so cool. This guy, the, the sheer... There's so much character in this pose. I'm just a huge fan of it. And again, like, this thing... This is scary. This haunts my dreams, man. This is terrifying. Uh, this guy, they, they did a tutorial on Warhammer Plus for how to paint this flag thing. But again, these ghouls, the Crypt Guard, they're just so cool looking to me. Really happy about them. These guys on the giant fell bats, these are looking scary. It also it also looks reminiscent of that um, Uruk War Clan's model where he's on the Big mount. <clears throat> the dice. These dice look a lot like the uh, Horus Heresy Night Lords dice. The, this symbol is not so far removed because I own the Horus Heresy Night Lords dice. And the skulls are slightly different shape, and obviously the dice are a different colour behind the red, but it's very similar. This awesome Iron Head Squat Prospector model. Nice for Necromunda. Glad that's there. Store and version model. Yeah, the Fire Slayer is cool. I love this towel. Invocation of the Elements, this ethereal. It's so well done. It's so beautiful. I love this long blade he's got. It's such an awesome looking sculpt. I'm so happy for Tau players. If you're able to get down and get this model, I'm so happy for you because Tau players deserve a cool, good, new ethereal. The old ethereal sculpt was not aging very well. And this is beautiful. This is a beautiful model to me. I actually got the um, a year subscription for White Dwarf to White Dwarf for Christmas this uh, the just gone twenty twenty three, and because of when it was ordered, this is going to be my first issue from the subscription. So I'm very looking. I'm very much looking forward to reading through this because uh, it'd be the first time I've, I've been reading White Dwarf since it you know, since trying to do. Warhammer stuff for YouTube and it's going to be just interesting to be reading it from that perspective. I'll be getting this, this bottle opener. I don't know why, I just think it's really cool. Like, I love axes and weapons anyway. It's unique, it's different and just this being on my keys will be really fun. And then finally Warhammer Plus will finish off that you know, brawl of the centerpieces cool piece of lore masters and a paint guide for this armor 
which is a colour scheme of Dark Angel's armour I'm always really impressed by. So it'd be nice to see the Citadel Masterclass tutorial for it going live this week. Uh, that's been this week's Warhammer Community News Roundup. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to like this video, I'd really, I'd really appreciate that. Spread it for the algorithm. If you want to subscribe for more just unbridled positivity about this hobby, I'd really appreciate that as well. I've got a Patreon and in the description, and memberships are open for the channel. Uh, and if you want to share this around with any friends, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, you know, try and spread this channel as wide as it can, because let's face it, positivity is just nice to have in your lives, isn't it? Uh, you know, God knows I've, I've been really enjoying having, just focusing on the positives for this hobby. With that, I will see you next time. I uh, hope you're having a really good day.